Hey guys, so as you've been paying attention, we have been doing our MCU review. Uh, we had recently done um, Incredible Hulk. That video will be posting soon. Yep. We are going to continue tonight with Iron Man 2. Um, this is where we start to begin hearing the talks of the MCU becoming more than just these standalone movies. Um, we see some characters for the first time that we're going to see for a long time afterwards. Um, you know, we see some newer armors, which if you've paid attention to Iron Man throughout the MCU, he always has different suits in every movie. So we get to see a couple of those. Um, we also get a real good look at Don Cheadle's roadie. And we actually get our first War Machine sighting, yep. which is super awesome. Great scene. So, there's a lot of good things about this movie. Um, we'll kind of talk about it after we get done. Do you want to say anything before we watch the clip? Um, I remember seeing this in theater, and I just want to point out that Dad, I remember him not liking this. Shocker. For, big one. Uh, but he was like, I feel like they really just took out the bad guy way too easy. And I was like, yeah, Dad, whatever you say. <laughs> I don't know. First time, huh? It's just, he's a first time hater. Yeah. But I don't know. I always just remember that yeah. talk on the way home. Because you always talk in the car. Yeah. And so, I just wanted to bring that. But his dad is not a he Marvel does, fan. He actually not thinks even that superheroes in general. He actually makes fun of us for doing this. He says, like, I don't know why you guys want to do something awful. Yeah. He hates. So. But whatever, bro. To each their own. I guess. So. But you want to watch this awesome clip we have? Put on? Are you ready? I am ready. Let's do it.
That scene just goes so hard. So hard. Like, uh, also, the silver and red still flows so good compared to gold and red. I don't care what you want to say, whether you hate it or not, it looks good. I'll throw it out there. Um, That's actually a callback to Iron Man's suit when he was in the West Coast Avengers. Okay. He had a silver and red did it have like the same kind of design, like the? It was like similar, but and... obviously, the technology in this movie they made it look very, very modern. Okay. The when he had the suit that I'm talking about, this was the '80s. Okay, so. Okay. Um, one thing I do want to say is that I'm not sure the actor's name, but the guy who plays Whiplash, Mickey Rourke. Uh, I I actually like his Whiplash. I enjoy it. I feel like it could have. He should have been more. Prominent, I guess you could say, or more dangerous. But I enjoyed his portrayal of of a uh, whiplash. Hmm. Sure. This is actually one of my biggest complaints about this movie. This is Mickey Rourke. Yeah. Okay. Now, as like the way he looks as Whiplash, I love it. I mean, he looks good as Whiplash. But I just didn't buy the character itself. Like for me. One of my biggest complaints about Mickey Rourke, it starts at the beginning when his dad dies yeah. and he does that whole screaming scene. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, it's not believable. That's fair. I That's don't fair. even buy it. I don't feel like his Russian accent was very good. I could agree with that. But I do think that he's jacked in this movie. Mm -hmm. So the aesthetic of him with the suit, you know, especially here mm -hmm. where he's got the whips and he's, I mean, he looks amazing. I just, I don't think he was a great portrayal of the character overall. Okay. And now maybe the one thing I'll give you is, is we don't actually get to see him as much. Right. As far as like him being the main villain. I actually think Justin Hammer is fantastic in this movie. Yeah, he's great. I think he's I agree. the best part of the villains in this movie. Because he's a little smart well, aleck. I mean, and he's, he's kind of running the whole show anyway. Yeah, and he's screwing things up. But he's also... Screwing things up. Yeah. You know, he's screwing things up for Tony, but he's also bumbling, stumbling through everything. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, I agree. Um, another thing, just watching this scene and the movie in general, is how, I don't know, the, I guess the whips themselves are a little, um, what's the word I'm looking for? What do you all say dad is? Uh, about whiny things. Inconsistent. Inconsistent. Yeah. Like, the first two hits he lands on Tony right at the beginning of that fight. Slight, you see the cut. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So every time it hit him, it should have... Exactly. Him. So when he had that thing around his neck and he was wrapping himself up... Like, when he wrapped around his neck, that should have been hit. Well, and... You know what I mean? The car. Yeah, exactly. Went straight through the car. It cut open that whole car. Yeah. And, like... That's true. I don't know what old boy was thinking. If he really wanted to get it, Tony, he should have went ahead and mm -hmm. just wiped out Pepper and Happy. It could have been one swing. They were sitting in the same row. And in the comics, Whiplash would have. So, um, an I don't know what old boy was really thinking there. Yeah. Like, obviously, he was after him. He yeah. wanted to kill him. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He wanted to kill him before he even had the suit on. Right. But, um, also with that, uh, it also shows that Tony, without a suit, is a hero. Yeah. Straight up, he went on with a, like a door panel or something. <laughs> That's actually really funny. Hits him with the door, and Mickey Rourke's like, "What are you doing, bro?" <laughs> yeah, right. Um, what well, like War Machine too? We get to see War Machine in this movie because he uh, as Don Cheadle, and we talked about that in the first one from uh, Terrence Howard mm -hmm. to Don Cheadle. I would have liked to have seen Terrence Howard in the the mm -hmm. armor. To see been. how it would have went down, obviously, if you go back to the first one, we know what would happen there. Uh, but I do like Don Cheadle, and I, I buy him as War Machine. Mm -hmm. I do think he does a better job of kind of having that smart aleck best friend yeah. that Rhodey yeah. is. And when you know, after everything goes down, where Tony's literally like basically trying to get rid of everything he has. Because he still thinks he's dying from the plutonium, you know, in mm -hmm. his neck. And when War Machine finally shows up to the Stark Expo and he's got the full, like, guns and everything, mm -hmm. 
I mean, that's so comic accurate, it's scary how good they made the War Machine look. So I'm with you. Like, that was a really good part. Um, obviously, we get to finally see Scar Jo yep. as Natasha. And yeah, she kills it in oh. this one. For sure, you get her, we get her for like 10 minutes max. But most of the movie, she's looking amazing being an assistant. And then, like, you find out that she's been playing Tony Stark and everyone while she's working for Nick Fury. Whole time. One of my favorite parts is when he's like Tony's talking and she just jabs the thing in his neck Mm -hmm. and then obviously like one of the most iconic scenes from this movie is when Happy and Natasha are trying to stop Vanko and they go to the facility where um, they had Vanko being uh, held and they have all the guards and Happy's fighting this one guy throughout (laughs) the whole scene and Natasha is just wrecking stuff and you get the classic, you know, from the Black Widow movie, you're such a poser. You, you do this. You're such a poser. <laughs> but she does the famous pose, and Happy finally beats the guy, and he starts to like, I got him! And he looks over, and there's body, 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 dude hanging, choking on a string. It's amazing. It's a great scene, 100%. Um, what else can I say great about this movie before we go into the bad? Um, I think the whole thing with his dad was cool. Because if you remember, later on, we talk about how, like, Tony always had a weird relationship with his dad. Yeah. And it was in this movie where he starts to realize that some of this was his own perceptions and that his dad was trying to do things to prepare him for the future. Because Howard Stark is a futurist. So is Tony. Tony's a futurist. So they're always making plans for the future. And the whole thing where Tony's trying to figure out how he stops himself from literally dying and his dad had the idea the whole time Mm -hmm. and he even says he's like even dead dad's still taking me to school even dead I'm the hero if you don't know what that is you need to catch up real quick you got a lot to do Um, there is homework Edith I guess you could say and a quiz and a quiz but um now you said earlier that this is one of your lower movies yes and I can understand why, and I agree with you on the fact that this is the weak, <clears throat> sorry, the weakest of the Iron Man trilogy. Mm-hmm, I agree. And I agree with that statement. Obviously, it'd be one, three, two for me. For sure, is 100% that percent agree? Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, what makes this to you less than three? Mickey Rourke as okay. Whiplash. I just didn't buy him. Um, I don't know. There was some parts of the movie that just felt unnecessary. Okay. To like the Stark Expo scenes, some of those were just kind of drawn out. Okay. Like obviously you needed that backdrop for Justin Hammer manipulating everything with Vanko, and then like Vanko taking over and taking over the drones. Mm-hmm. You know, and the whole thing with Tony's neck and you know him dying from the poisoning. I get that. But how did nobody but Rhodey see that he had this giant digital crossword puzzle on the side of his neck? Yeah, true. Pepper is supposed to pay attention to everything. She should have known. Happy Happy. should have known. Yeah. Natasha, who literally is there as undercover, and Rhodey were the only two who knew about it. True. True that. You know, that's my thing is like... Let's see, yeah. There was some inconsistency stuff there. Um, This isn't... A terrible movie overall. Yeah. But when we're comparing it to the movies of the MCU, you know, there's just a lot of movies that have more impact either from the storyline perspective or that are just genuinely better movies. So it's lower for me for that reason. Okay. So what about what about for you? Where would you put it? Now without Um, the ranking, just like it's it's like I said, it's less than the third, but it is kind of in the middle area. Um, because there are forty-two, right? Correct. Yeah. Forty-two. This is yeah the middle area. Um, I went ahead last time cousin Jeffro. He did. He did all of his. Yeah, I have my list completely he, he from one to forty-two. Did his whole list. Um, the other day I had a bunch of time on my hand for no reason. I was like, might as well do the same thing. Yep. So I did. So everything is thought out yep. and ready to go now. So I can firmly say that this is in the middle. 
Um, what else could? I feel like there's just something that I'm really missing that I wanted to talk about about this movie. I love that we start to see some of the entrances where it's always ACDC playing. Yeah. Because... Oh, I love Led Zeppelin. Yeah. <laughs> no way home, I hear you. That's a good callback. But at the beginning of this, it plays Shoot to Throw. And if you pay attention in Avengers, when he first appears as Iron Man to help, before he shows up, what do you hear playing? Shoot to Throw. Okay. So... Neat you know, little callbacks there. Yeah. Okay. Um, Obviously, I think the Avengers, like, you really start to hear about the Avengers for the first time. That's true. Aside from when Tony Stark, or when Fury says, there's an idea, you yeah. know. With, you know, Iron Man 2, he literally is talking about bringing Tony into the initiatives, Avengers initiative and then turns him down. Because Tony Stark can't be trusted. And that's a fair reason, I feel. Because throughout this one, he's still pretty self-absorbed yeah. with himself. He's still, I'm Iron Man. Like, the whole scene with Congress is a perfect example. Like, listen, we know Stearns is obviously a jerk. And we find out later that he's actually working for Hydra. So forget that dude. But Tony's response to that and how he handles things is the exact thing that Tony brings a lot of the stuff that happens on himself. Yeah. But one of my favorite parts of that scene, too, is where, like, he's trying to get Rhodey to manipulate his report. And then Tony says, I gotta have it, I gotta have it. And then he proves that it's uh, Justin Hammer. And then he says, he says, for the rest of the world, five years. For Hammer Industries, 20s. (laughs) <laughs> like, oh my god yeah no I agree um, we really don't see a lot of real less self absorbed mm-hmm. for, for a good minute for Tony yeah. um, especially until Avengers also the the final fight with uh, all the robots and whatnot coming in from Hammer and it, it's Rhodey and him mm-hmm. tag teaming I do love that scene. Me too. I feel like it's really well... Like, obviously, a lot of that is CGI. Yeah. This is 2010. I feel like there's a lot of really good CGI oh, yeah. for they that scene. Oh, yeah. did a good job with that movie. Um, I don't know. I've really... Like, if I think of this, I think of, A, this suit-up scene because it's gangster as fuck. But, with that being said, uh, that final battle scene, too. Well, and there's another thing that... I know you probably know this, but a lot of people who haven't really, like, dug deep... There's actually a theory during that scene. There's a part where Tony's fighting some of the robots and he sees a kid standing there with an Iron Man mask on. And he flies down to help him and the kid stands there and tries to fight the robot even though he can't do anything. Mm -hmm. And Tony takes him out and he says, nice job, kid. There is a lot of theories and I think Kevin Feige actually confirmed it that that's supposed to be a young Peter Parker. Mmm... Wonder how that plays in in the future. I don't think Tony and Peter have any interactions in the MCU, though, right? Not at all. No. They're like enemies. Definitely haters. Yeah. He hates Iron Man. Yeah. That's how I remember. Yeah. Yeah. Wink, wink. There's Nudge. Knock on wood. (laughs) Um, Who did the rank first last time? Was it you? Well, because we had Young Buck with us last time. That is true. So I'm trying to think out of me and you. What do you give this movie 1 to 10? A standalone movie, what do you give this? 7.5. Okay. So, there, I mean, there's so many things about this movie that you've got to, like, love it just because of it. Mm-hmm. The racetrack scene, the final scene at the Stark Expo, Natasha making her first appearance, yep. Don Cheadle's Rhodey, and mm-hmm. you getting to see the War Machine the connections with Tony and his father and Tony finally realizing that his father did make a lot of things and did care about him, but he had to be careful. Like, you can just put it all out there in the open. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, we start to really see the formation of the Avengers and the idea that this is going to be bigger than just these standalone movies. Um, 
And the concept of Tony realizing that he can't do everything on his own, even though he has the Iron Man suit and he's a you know genius billionaire philanthropist. Playboy. How did I say philanthropist? Wow. Good call. I act like a rookie. Good job. Good job. So, you know, there are a lot of good things about this movie, but Justin Hammer, like, I don't think just uh, the guy who plays Justin Hammer gets enough credit for his portrayal. Um, he's definitely hateable, for yeah, sure. Yeah, you hate him, but he's funny as heck. Dude. Yeah, no, yeah. You want to watch him screw up, but it's so funny to watch him do it. Now, this is going to be a little off topic, but I don't know if you know this. Do you... Have you you've seen the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know the kid that's like leading all the kids into the foot clans like thing yeah and he's like anything you want do it and then the kid's like you got any cigarettes and he says regular or mental that's him really that's the actor that plays just dude that's pretty cool actually so so there's a lot of cool things i think mickey rourke's portrayal of vanko specifically like how he speaks that uninspiring scene when his dad dies, I just don't buy that. Yeah, that scene could have been left out. I agree. Um, some of the Stark Expo stuff felt like a little drawn out. Mm-hmm. Um, the idea that nobody noticed Tony's literal like digital crossword growing on his neck and how he was making a lot of reckless decisions, I just... I struggle to believe that Pepper and Happy specifically did not pick up on that. Mm-hmm. You know, the two people who claim to know him better than anyone and they didn't see it. Yeah. So, it's a good movie. It's not a great movie. Mm-hmm. It's definitely above average, but in the MCU it's it's a That's fair. So, for me 7.5 on that ranking. What about for Um you? So, I give this movie half below you. I give this a 7. 7. Um, one thing as you were kind of talking there do you think that this movie would have been better after Avengers or do you think it works better before um, I don't I don't know that it could have done better after Avengers because there's some things that happen here that obviously we get Romanoff we get Romanoff we get more Avengers talk all that I get it well we also get to see that there's more to Pepper and Tony than just the work relationship. Because mm-hmm. there's a little bit of a hint of a flirtation in the first one. Yeah. But you start to see that Pepper and Tony genuinely care for each other. You know, and yeah. at the end, they kiss. Yeah. So without that, there's no context. As, like, they go from kind of flirting, but they're still boss and secretary, to them being openly in a relationship in Avengers. That's fair. Yeah. You know? The idea that they're going to build a tower, you know, for Avengers Tower. We don't find out how Tony realizes how to harness the power of the arc reactor, which starts with him fixing the issue in his heart. So I think that's another one, too. Okay. So you think it works better before Avengers? I do, yeah. Okay. Now, Iron Man 3, I think, obviously... Definitely is better after Avengers. Yeah. I agree. So, okay. I was just curious if you if you had a different take well, on that. What about you? Do you? No, I agree. I think it had to come before to build more more of what Tony can do mm-hmm. and how advanced he has come. Because if, if you would have watched Iron Man 1, there was no Iron Man 2, to Avengers, yep. the, the technology advancements, mm-hmm. the tower, where Pepper and him are now, like you said, mm-hmm. like none of it really would have worked. And I, I, I'm sad that we talked about all this, and I meant to talk about this during that scene. Like, that whole part, when they're on the racetrack, and Tony has the thing, you start to see some of the cool ways Tony has his suits just come out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Like, he literally just puts his foot in, and then it's just like, Shh, and he attaches it. Dude, let's That's talk about that real quick. What was old boy doing that whole time? Yeah. What was Whiplash doing? I hate when they do that. Like, <laughs> like why would like, you let him This dude has up? been, like, stopping them from, like, getting the case. He's... Cut the car in half. Almost cut Happy and Pepper in half three different times. But now all of a sudden you got to have the like, oh no, we got to let him have the moment where he puts the suit on because we got to make this fair all of a sudden. Real? Like, why did he do that? I'm going to talk about that right at the end of that. That's true. 
that's, that's a good point. That's my fault. It's it's like it's such a cool moment getting to see the armor come on. Yeah. But think about it legit. Like if you're talking as a villain, why wouldn't you use that time to press your attack? Yeah, honestly. Especially his when, arms are exposed. Take that shit off. And let's be real, we already talked about this. We saw that one swipe of those <laughs> cut the armor. If he had just went Shh, done, his arm's gone. He went to a car. Went to a car. His arm, no more arm. Done. And there's nothing he would have done. No. Nope. I don't know what Whiplash was doing. But then he would have been Iron Muck. You know what? Maybe I take it back. Maybe, maybe he was a stupid Whiplash. I told you, dude. I'm telling you, bro. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's okay. Listen, I'm sorry. My fault. I, I think he, he kind of looked cool. cool. He looked yeah. cool. He did look cool. He had the look, but his portrayal, yeah, was not great. And there are things about this movie that don't make sense. I agree. Like, and <laughs> who in their right minds be like, okay, this is a professional race car. <laughs> get get that get race that guy in there. <laughs> racing like contest. And Tony Stark, a billionaire who's never raced a day in his life, is all of a sudden like getting in a race car because he owns it. Yeah. No, that Bruh. would not happen. No, Bruh. I don't care how rich you are, man. Yeah. Also, those guys don't want to get in there. They just want to watch it go around in circles. Uh, hot take: NASCAR sucks. Anyway, I can already tell you what's going to happen. They turn left. <gasps> Crazy. How did you call that? I don't know. You are insane. Yeah. Are you supposed to pa- stop? We can't talk about this. <laughs> We're going to make a bunch of people mad. <laughs> Dude, stop. stop, stop. <laughs> anyway, um. <laughs> So here's my ranking of where I put this. Like I said, it's like middle. Because as I was doing my ranking, I realized that there's a lot of movies that I'm just like, mm. you know what I'm saying? That you don't care about as much. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe if watching them again with like a more open mind perspective, it could change. That whole list could change. Yeah. When I go watch Thor again, maybe I don't like it again. Maybe I do like it more. Yeah. I don't know. It's hard mm-hmm. telling. But this movie stands at 21. 21. Literally mid. That's honestly pretty high. That's way higher than mine. I'm sure it is. But now, now that we've talked about it, I'd, I'd actually drop it lower. But because it's where it is, it's where it is. Yeah. So for me, this movie's at 36. Okay. So, you know, a lot of the movies that are below it are movies that are going to come later that I just cannot deal with, like for different reasons. Sure. I actually have Thor just right above it. And Thor is one of those, there are parts of it that I love. And obviously, we have to have Thor. So it's the same thing with Iron Man 2. While it's low on the overall ranking for the MCU, this movie has a huge impact in the overall MCU universe. Because we start to see how Tony's working on different... Mm -hmm. Suits, we see that he's harnessed the ability for the arc reactor, which leads to all of the technological stuff he's starting yeah. to do in Avengers. You know, Romanoff, um, Thor, we get Hawkeye, yeah, like all that set up. The beginning of Tony and Pepper's actual relationship. Um, another thing to throw in, um, we see here he see he gets wrapped up in the electricity mm-hmm. and he kind of sees that on the screen that it's like kind of amping his power, yeah. But he doesn't know how to use it. Doesn't know how to use it. Guess what he learns in Avengers. Oh, yeah. Guess we'll talk about that when we get there. You don't know. You don't know. Sorry about your loss. And that is one of the best parts is when Tony, like, is fighting Thor. And he's having a hard time fighting Thor. And then Thor shoots the lightning at him. And he's like, okay. My turn. Yeah. This Does that... mother not know it? <laughs> thou wearest thy drapes. <laughs> Dude, that movie's so good. I can't wait to talk good. about Avengers. I cannot wait to talk about That's that. That's actually, like, a top... That is a good top one. movie of all time. I want to say it's in my my high ones. It's, it's in my top ten. I can't remember. It's for sure top ten. Um. So, Iron Man Two didn't do that great, but but keep in mind that this movie is almost needed before the Avengers. And again, remember the standalone ranking versus the MCU ranking are very different for obvious reasons. Because if we were talking about how we rank it overall, we gave it an above average score. But if you're looking at the MCU ranking, it oh, looks like it's I actually very... match you. I got Thor one, one above this. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. My but see, you have some movies that hey, don't be looking. are lower. Don't be looking. I can't even with you right now. What one? Which one? Don't don't say it. Just point to it real quick. Which one? 
Oh wait, no, never mind. Okay, I I thought that you had that in order of how you ranked it, and I saw Winter Soldier below, and I was like, oh my gosh. No, dude, okay. stop tripping. That movie's goaded. Yeah, that's a great movie. Stop playing. I can't wait to talk about that one too. Winter Soldier is a good movie. This just we we could go on tangents. Dude. Also, guys, so if you are people that are out there that are watching this and you are actually invested into our Marvel Mondays, we are thinking of doing a sort of podcast. Mm-hmm. Let us know down there in the comments where y'all be giving us your ideas, all that. Mm -hmm. What you would think if Cousin Jeffro and I and maybe a couple other people hopped on here and just talked about Marvel in a whole... Not just the MCU. In a whole. Honestly, we can even even talk uh, superheroes. Just in general. Yeah. And like it wouldn't just be that. Like We would do other things. Yeah. Um, Let us know what you think because we are seriously considering it and if you guys think that you would be interested, it would be something that we would do. And we definitely want ideas because I don't know if you pay attention to a lot of our videos. We're always saying, you know, even if they're negative comments, we read them. Yeah. Now, if you are being a jerk, we're not going to... Most of the time, Dad's going to get you back. Yeah. So, yeah, he likes, he likes bickering with y'all. And I'm going to turn it into, like, self-deprecation where I'm like, hey, I'm going to own it then. Call me Little Debbie. I don't care. Yeah. Sucker. Sucker. But Booker T, for sure, you? we definitely want your opinions, you know, especially if you have ideas about stuff that we could talk about. Yeah, you absolutely. Know, just like we do with the music. A lot of the stuff we do with music reactions are based on what people have requested. Yeah. And it's kind of branched from there. So here, we're willing to talk about things that you guys bring up, mm-hmm. but... We can't do it on a reaction channel. That's not going to work. We need to be able to actually like right and like do if, research if we were talking and talk the about the entirety it. MCU. That'd be a whole episode. You know what I'm Seriously, saying? Seriously, the inter- no, the entire the MCU. We're talking like it probably could be a two parter. Like we could go into so much detail and about everything. Know, we could do it in phases, and we could still have real shit. We could still have two to three hour conversations. Period. Right. We're talking about this one movie, and I guarantee you that this is. A lengthy one. Yeah. So Yeah. I'm just saying like Like Marvel Mondays, you're gonna you're getting almost a dumbed down version of where we could go, where we could talk. And this is us just off the cuff for the most part, aside from knowing where our lists are and obviously our common knowledge of it. This is us not looking at phones the whole time. Right. You know, fact checking, having someone in the corner. If we did a podcast, we would We'd be Come prepared. Pull it out. All we that would stuff. have a computer at our disposal to look that stuff up while we were talking. Yeah. You know, so and like we we want we want feedback. We want to make this grow. We're doing this for fun, but we love talking about this stuff. Yeah. And so, in an ideal world, we make this like what we do all the time and get you guys involved and like yeah. be able to have callers and emails and like have responses. So, if you'd like to see us talk about a whole bunch of different things, including the MCU and in the whole, all of it, let us know. And like we said, if we can make it, we could talk Marvel, DC, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Star Wars, all of it, all, all the fandoms, yeah, all Lord the different Rings, stuff, Lord of the Rings, uh, Game of Thrones, Game of Thrones, that's a big one, Harry Potter, The Witcher, and like like we were uh, not necessarily um, just TV. We could. We could go into farther depth about uh, problems in the world. We're staying away from political stance. Because people take it too far. Way too far. And we can have a conversation and disagree. But we are not going to do the whole... Ejecting each other out of our lives. Yeah. Because that's absolutely ridiculous. And if you can't listen to a different perspective... Without like throwing a tantrum like a child, then probably should be we're sent not to prison, and we're not going to deal with you. Yeah, we're not. If you want to have a disagreement, absolutely, we can talk about it. Right. If you want to be a child, you're going to get treated like a child and put in time out. Only our time out is we ain't speaking to you again. Yeah. So, hope so, you guys yeah. like it. Um, it's going to be happening necessarily probably soon. So, but if there are Soon-ish. things that you want us to talk about. Let us know. And we're all ears. All ears. Real. Because we want topics. We want to talk. And just remember, next, we go to Asgard. Hmm. 
Another.